A sequence is a set of numbers written down in a definite order. And sometimes the numbers or the terms of the sequence follow a rule or a formula. One particularly noteworthy sequence was named after an Italian mathematician that lived in the 12th century, and his name was Fibonacci, or Leonardo of Pisa. He was given this problem. Suppose you take a pair of rabbits and you keep them in an enclosed area, like a walled garden, so they can't get out. So this pair of rabbits live there through month one, month two, month three, and so on. So this is like their life history. And in Fibonacci's problem, this pair of rabbits, once they had reached the second month of their life, they were able to breed and start to produce other rabbits. And every month after the second, they had a pair of rabbits themselves. So here's the first generation, born at the beginning of month three. And they carried on living. We're going to assume none of them die. And none of them can escape because they're all in this walled garden. Okay? So when we get to the next month, this original pair of rabbits have another pair. And here they are. And they too stay alive, carry on living their lives within this walled garden. When we get to the fifth month, this original pair of rabbits have yet another pair of rabbits. But at this stage, this first generation of offspring have also reached the beginning of the third month of their life, and so they too start to breed. So we get yet another pair coming in here, from this pair here. Fibonacci's question was this. How many pairs of rabbits are there in every month? Let's count them up and see. Well, in month one, one pair. Month two, still one pair. Month three, we've moved to two pairs. Month four, be three pairs. And by the time we've got to the fifth month, there are now five pairs. Now, this is the sort of thing you can easily do yourself, and if you do the same exercise and work out how many pairs of rabbits you'll get in the sixth month, you'll find that the number here is eight. This is the Fibonacci sequence, and there is a rule so that we can calculate new terms in the sequence. And the rule is this, that if you take this term here, that's the third term, you'll find that this is the sum of the two previous terms, so one plus one is two. And the same rule applies every term thereafter. So all we have to do to calculate new terms is sum the previous two terms. So when we get to 3, for example, that's 1 plus 2. When we get to 5, that's 2 plus 3. When we get to 8, that's 3 plus 5. And so on. So the next term, if we were to write it down, would be 5 plus 8, which is 13. And you could go on generating more and more terms of this Fibonacci sequence for yourself. Now, what's rather surprising is the more and more that you look around in nature and in the arts and in architecture, the Fibonacci sequence crops up again and again and again. We're going to have a look at where it can crop up in music. Many of you will be familiar with the piano keyboard. This is the note A. Now, the reason why we can hear that is because sound waves of a particular audible frequency, 440 cycles per second, leave the speaker inside the keyboard and reach our eardrums, where they're converted into minute electrical signals which pass to our brain. So we're hearing there a sound which is reaching our eardrums at 440 cycles per second. This is a tuning fork. Some of you may have held and used one of these. If I sound this tuning fork, the prongs on it will also vibrate, and it's designed to vibrate at 440 cycles a second. That means these prongs backwards and forwards for 440 times every second. Let's hear it. OK, so that's why we can hear sounds when the sound waves reach our ears. What's this got to do with the Fibonacci sequence? Well, here's the sequence again, and I've added a few more terms this time. Remember, this A vibrates 
440 cycles a second. What if we move to the A, which is an octave higher? That's this one. Now, what's rather strange is that the frequency of this second A is 880 cycles per second. It's twice the frequency of the first A. So the frequencies are in a ratio of 2 to 1. And 2 and 1 are numbers which appear in the Fibonacci sequence. What if we take another note? What if we take this note, E? Well, if you calculate the frequency of this note, you'll find that it's 660 cycles per second. So we've 660, 440. And if you calculate the ratio of 660 to 440, you'll find that ratio is 3 to 2. And again, these are numbers appearing in the Fibonacci sequence. I'm now going to go right up here to this note. That's a C-sharp. If we find the frequency of this note, we find it's 1,100 cycles per second. So 1,100 up at the C-sharp, 440 at the A we started with. If you calculate the ratio of 1,100 to 440, you'll find that ratio is 5 to 2. Again, numbers appearing in the Fibonacci sequence. Now, if we come down an octave from the C-sharp, again, these frequencies will be in the ratio of 2 to 1, because they're an octave apart, we find we come to this C-sharp here, and if we put all those three notes together, the A, the E, and the C-sharp, what we find is we've got a major chord, a chord which sounds very pleasing to the ear and which is, in, which is very important in all sorts of harmony. So there's the Fibonacci sequence appearing in music. It also appears in all sorts of other ways on the keyboard. If we take, for example, the scale of C major, a one octave scale, suppose we count the number of notes in the scale. There are eight notes there, and eight is a number appearing in the Fibonacci sequence. What about if we include all the white notes and all the black notes? So we'll start from this C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So including all the notes, we've got thirteen. And there's more. There's five black notes. Five is in the Fibonacci sequence, and the five notes themselves are split into groups of two and three. Again, numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. Now, the more you look around in nature and in music and in the arts, you'll find the Fibonacci sequence cropping up all over the place. If you're interested in knowing a bit more, go onto the web and search for Fibonacci, and you'll find literally thousands of sites with interesting facts about this sequence on.